Good afternoon, shalom. I'm uh, Philippe Gravet. I'm working with uh, CEA. It's a large research institute in France uh, dealing with um, uh, nuclear energy, um, nuclear weapons, and also with uh, a lot of uh, other topics, including ICT. And uh, my institute, the LIST, is uh, dealing specifically with um, ICT. Uh, we are working in a use case that is called social presence and it provides um, a virtual travel inside a big place in France near Paris that is called the Cité des Sciences, the city of science and industry, where you can visit a lot of interesting things wh wh when you are a scientific mind. So you have here a view of the real Cité des Sciences um, and the, the use case uh, provides a, se a scenario with uh, several big steps. One is a visit of the Cité des Sciences, and you will have a demo about that in the evening. Uh, people have to meet, uh, so tools are provided to do that, and there will be also a demo in the evening on this uh, part. Um, then, and I will focus on this section of a scenario, we propose people to share an experience, an unusual experience, and in uh, this case it is the feeling of working in microgravity inside the International Space Station. To experience that, we will use a technology that was developed mainly for the industry. We call it the interactive physics simulation. And it provides the accurate reproduction of physical phenomena. It uses up to no industrial models that are very complex. And it, is often, um, it often requires immersive systems to be very Fast, I may say that the technology, the technology requires expensive hardware and is quite complex. And in the frame of this project, we adapt it to the, the problem of virtual worlds. So the goal is to simulate physical phenomena. We have, well, I will skip that since we don't have too much time and it's quite technical, but you must remind that doing simple things like computing a distance between an object and another one, when you, we have a big model, may be quite complex. And we have to do that very, very fast. Up to now, there were several approaches to do that. Uh, one approach was the game approach. Uh, it was mainly focusing on producing um, convincing behaviors, but not necessarily physically accurate. When you see a big explosion on a movie, it's not an accurate reproduction of an explosion. It's a spectacular thing. For the industry, we've rather developed the virtual prototype approach where we want to provide an accurate, a physically accurate simulation of a phenomena. This is an example here. We have um, a tool that is uh, used to put uh, putty paste on the body of a car that is moved by a human operator in the virtual environment on a virtual body car using an haptic arm and the operator will feel all the physical texture, all the slopes of the body car and it's very useful to test that this operation is possible and also to train people doing that. This is also applicable and this is more interesting for us in this metaverse context to the control of dynamic virtual human. Here we have a um, quite simple avatar that is disturbed by uh, several motions of the floor and we have not programmed it. Um, it is controlled according to the law of physics. Yes, we, we are thinking about a project to deal with the legal rights of avatars. <laughs> so it's not programmed. 
we um, ask the virtual human controller to follow some criteria and he tried to do that by himself. Here we control one point, it's the right arm of a virtual human and all the body of a human will move to maintain the balance of a human. So we only move one point and all the other motions are controlled by the virtual human controller. Here we have another example of grasping an object. It's a heavy object, the weight of the object is taken into account and all the motions of the hands are controlled. This kind of virtual human features between 50 and 100 degrees of freedom. Now we have a virtual human that is controlled with a motion capture system and here we provide a metaphor for walking. And the question of metaphor is very important because a lot of things cannot be duplicated from the real world to the virtual world. Here, the real human cannot walk because he is in front of a screen. So we have to find ways of giving the order to walk. Here it is a training session with a virtual human. We want to train people to manage dangerous products that may uh, fall from uh, a tank. And here the operator using uh, once again motion capture equipment control all these things. I will stop here and we will go to what we are doing in uh, the Metaverse project. What we want is to provide a feeling of working in microgravity but using very simple um, man-machine interface hardware. And the idea is to control just the hands, the arms of the operator using a low-cost system on a PC. No immersive system, no um, very expensive immersive environment. The cost of a system you will see here, well, I will go quickly on this slide. This one is more interesting. Um, we want to be able to control the virtual human with a Kinect, typically. We were discussing about that this morning. And with a Kinect, we have the position of some points in space. It's different from the previous motion capture system where we have the position of objects in space with position and orientation. Here, we have only position. And we try to reconstruct the missing data by taking into account the fact that what we control is a human that has a skeleton and we know what kind of motions he is able to do. And this is the current status of uh, our um, microgravity experience. So here we have the free compartment of the uh, International Space Station that were modeled for the purpose of a project. We are one operator that is being calibrated in the C position by the Kinect and no, his motions are reproduced by the virtual human in the space station and it, each time he touch one of the wall of the ISS is repulsed from this wall. Sometimes he can use the head also. He can push the object and by pushing himself, he is able more or less to navigate inside the space station. We can do that with different players. Here we have a different guy. All the collisions with the, the walls are shown by a rose. And we will see that this is uh, quite important. Okay, I will go to the conclusion. Uh, we have, of course, evaluated what was done. And a number of problems were found, and they are quite interesting, because we may think that using a hardware that is uh, 100 less expensive than 
previously will solve all the problems, but no, it creates new problems. It solves some problems, but creates other ones. The first problem we have found was latency. When you were moving your arm, the virtual human was following with a delay. This is not due to the Kinect. There's no delay in the Kinect uh, operation, but this was due to the damping of a virtual human. We control it with a kind of robot controller, and we introduce damping, and we will see why later, and this generates some feeling of latency that may be a problem. So we have to trim properly the demonstration. Another big problem is depth perception. In a virtual on environment like the ISS, you don't exactly see where is the wall, and you need 3D perception. Actually, all our tests, but not the video, were done with a 3D TV in order to provide the depth information. And we also provided the glyphs, the red rows, to show where collisions occur in order to inform the operator. Another difficult point was the management of a point of view. Our first idea was to track the orientation of the head. But first, with a Kinect, it's not so easy. And second, we have a screen in front of the operator. So turning the head to look in that direction to show that you want to look there, but the screen is there, it's quite difficult. So we attach the uh, point of view to the torso of a virtual human. It's not completely satisfactory, but if you move the torso, the Kinect can detect it and can move slightly the orientation of a point of view. It's not fantastic, but it works. Of course, using a mouse is not possible because your hands are tracked. Then the other problem is hand control. You have no information about the orientation of the hands and about the orientation of the forearm, so you have to reconstruct them. This kind of problem is often done in robotics. It's an inverse kinematics problem. But with a robot, you have often six degrees of freedom, not 50 or 100. So it's much more complex. And we have some singular points. It means that to process these difficulties, we have to do two things. First, we have to modify the kinematic of the virtual human. The virtual human is not reproducing exactly what is doing the real human. We forbid some positions. And secondly, we have to use metaphors. When the human push himself from the wall, it is not exactly the position of the fingers that are not known that decide of the motion. It is a metaphor. We decide from um, a purely uh, theoretical point of view that when you push on the wall, the effect will be what you have seen there. It's not completely the real thing. And finally, of course, moving into inside the International Space Station often generates some space sickness. So this is the reason why we introduce a significant damping in the control of a human. Because if you don't put that dumping, you will be like a, a billiard ball. You will move between the, all the walls of the, in, in the space station, and it may become very uncomfortable. So this is where we are here. Uh, a lot of problems are not addressed, and research is continuing. Thank you. Toda. Thank you.